Hi, my name is Dave. We're here at the South Finger Reed Bed just now, adjacent to the a new Dragonfly Pool next to the South Finger Path. Uh, this will be the backdrop for this week's Slimbridge's Wildlife Weekly. This week we'll be looking at waders, which have been absolutely fantastic um, all week. Should be good prospects for that over the next little while. We'll be looking at some of the very colourful insects that we can see around the reserve. And we'll be joining Phoebe, one of our avicultural wardens, to have a look at a special bird, the magpie goose, in the uh, collection area. The water levels here are dropped to expose lots of nice mud for these birds to feed in. Watch the red shank there, watch out for snipe. They're coming out of cover, out of the, the reeds and the rushes on the edges of the pool, out into the open uh, mud. That's a good time to get a really good view of them, those long bills probing deep into the, uh, into the mud. Uh, lapwing as well have been really good. We take them for granted, but we can see them close to the hides at this time of year. Watch them feeding. That short bill is designed for taking food close to or on the surface. You see that little foot trembling habit that they have to encourage that uh, life to come to the surface. Those are just three of the, the species that we've got here at the moment. Blacktail godwits, green shanks, green sandpipers. It's a great time of year to come uh, and just see waders in general. Well, this is a great time of year to watch dragonflies. We're not seeing a lot of species just now, but we are seeing big numbers. Three species dominating. The biggest uh, hawker dragonfly, long thin dragonfly that you'll see will be migrant hawkers. Dozens and dozens of those around at the moment. In fact, you'll have to excuse me if I'm distracted because they're flitting around us here at the South Finger by the dragonfly pool uh, there. Well worth checking for those. The other two are, are rather similar. Common darters and ruddy darters. Smaller red dragonflies. Look for the swollen abdomen, the end of the abdomen of the, uh, of the ruddy darter. And we've got some brilliant footage uh, of uh, a ruddy darter actually eating a fly. It doesn't sort of occur to people, but these dragonflies are aerial predators. They're swooping around the skies uh, looking for small flying insects to consume. Brilliant things to watch uh, and a good time of year to get nice and close to them so do watch out for those. Okay it's not just on the reserve that exciting things that have been happening this week. Let's join Phoebe Young. She's going to tell us a little bit about the magpie geese here in the collection at Slimbridge. We are here, in fact, to look at the family of W.A.D., one of our big old male patriarch magpie geese. This guy is old. Um, he's probably over 20. Um, he's exceptionally uh, mature in terms of experience, and so he manages to maintain a family of three wives, all of which um, are determined uh, according to his favour of them. So his oldest wife will tend to breed first, um, and then through the second and the third. But the benefit is, is that young wives get to benefit from his and her experience. So they'll all lay eggs in the same nest, they'll take turns to incubate together, and they will all help to rear the juveniles equally, without any bias or, or preference. They have the most wonderful faces. Um, their beaks are some of the most prehistoric looking uh, bills you'll ever see. Um, with the most amazing, blunt, hard, constantly growing point, a bit like a big, angry, big toenail. Um, but in addition to that, they have the most amazing hormonal lump, which grows from the top of their heads um, according to their standings in the entire pack, uh, according to their standings in the pen, and uh, according to their standings, according to the other groups of magpie geese here. As WAD continues into his early 20s um, and we experience so many more chicks from him, there will come a time when we'll need to elevate a new male to be the alpha breeder at WWT Slimbridge and we can enjoy the breeding efforts of another family for years to come. Very changeable weather over the last week, quite a lot of rain. Looks like a drier week ahead. That's going to be good news for these dragonflies. They're going to be active. They could be active right through September uh, and October. So a long window for, uh, for finding those. So check those out. There are some east winds in the forecast as well. That's very likely going to bring in more ducks, especially teal, shoveler, pintail and widgeon. They'll be arriving and they'll be in their eclipse plumage. So just beware, they'll be looking slightly different to those uh, colourful illustrations that we see in the, uh, in the books. 
If you've enjoyed this episode of Wildlife Weekly, please share it with your friends and followers on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and visit our YouTube channel. And if you want more information, please go to the WWT website.